Hello again. So, some of you have asked about these questions relating to translocation uh, and evidence for um, mass flow of those photosynthetic products in the phloem. Uh, in the notes that you, uh, that you have for transporting plants, on page 15 there is this diagram. It gives you like an overall um, explanation of each of the different techniques that have built our understanding of translocation. And I'll talk you through uh, each of those and then I'll have a look at a couple of the questions that are in the question booklet um, and give you some general ideas about what kind of things you need to include. So this is uh, evidence uh, for yeah. Florum's role, Florum as the tissue for translocation. Remember translocation, uh, if you look at my previous video on mass flow theory, uh, translocation is the movement of those photosynthetic products through the flow. Okay, so some of the first experiments that were conducted on this involved this uh, process, a technique called ringing. Uh, ringing means to remove the outer layer of tissue from the stem of a plant or from a tree. So in the early experiments, the, uh, the bark and the outer layer of tissue was removed. Uh, and what found... Uh, what those biologists found after that was that there was much less or there were fewer organic solutes, so carbohydrates and amino acids, those products from photosynthesis, being transported um, to the roots. So a ring was produced below the, uh, the photosynthesizing leaves of the plant. Uh, they measured the amount of uh, carbohydrates, amino acids, etc., sucrose being one of those carbohydrates in the roots, and they found it was measurably uh, different, it was significantly different or reduced. And that's because the ringing um, technique removes the phloem but does not remove the, uh, the xylem. And they're able to see that water was still being transported in the, in the xylem. There's the evidence that the, the xylem remained intact. But the, uh, those solutes, the products of photosynthesis, were not moving down to the roots. So that is the, uh, the first technique, ringing. Uh, the second one that's mentioned is the use of radioactive isotopes of carbon. So over here... Uh, there is a diagram. So, carbon dioxide uh, is obviously used by the plant in photosynthesis to produce the photosynthetic products. If that plant can be supplied with a radioactive isotope of carbon, such as carbon uh, 13 or carbon 14, in its carbon dioxide, it will uh, assimilate, it will fix that carbon-14 carbon dioxide into its photosynthetic products. It's then possible to take a, uh, what's shown in the diagram, a, a section through the stem. And what we find is, in the, in the stem, the phloem are these darker areas at the, uh, on the outside of the stem the xylem are the lighter ones on the inside. So if you take that section and then you lay it and place it on top of, um, on top of uh, the x-ray film, it's possible to produce what's called an, uh, uh, an auto radio graph. Uh, 
So an auto radiograph or this process of auto radiography is, is similar to a, uh, a photograph, but what it uh, shows is the distribution of the um, of the radioactive isotopes of carbon. And after 24 hours, that X-ray film shows that, by and large, that carbon is restricted to the areas on the outside. Now, my diagram here is not perfect, but this should show that the area on the outside, the position of the phloem, is where those darker regions form, and the darker regions represent the photosynthetic products that contain that radioactive isotope of carbon. And we'll come back to this in one of the questions later on. Okay, so that's technique number two. Uh, the third technique that's mentioned on the uh, um, on that page, is, uh, down the bottom, it shows the, uh, the sieve tube um, elements, the phloem sieve tube, and using autoradiography, it's possible to see that uh, the sucrose and the amino acids are transported in the sieve tube elements rather than the other parts of the phloem. So they're in the sieve tube, they're not in the companion cells, um, uh, which provides a bit more evidence for the role of the phloem as a tissue for translocation. I'm not going to focus on that too much. Next though, uh, and this has come up a few times, is the use of aphids. Okay. So an aphid uh, is uh, a small insect that is able to, uh, well it feeds on the photosynthetic products from the phloem. It has a mouth called a proboscis, and that proboscis uh, has like a needle or yeah, a needle-like part that sticks through the tissue and into the phloem. And it's like a hollow tube and they just suck the, um, uh, they suck the photosynthetic products directly from the phloem uh, to feed on. Now, <coughs> it's possible to anaesthetise those aph aphids and after they've been anaesthetised with carbon dioxide, uh, it's possible to remove their bodies from their heads. Their heads remain uh, in place, um, and then that becomes like a little tap for collecting the photosynthetic products, the sucrose, for example, amino acids, etc., from the uh, from the plant, and it literally just drips down, you can collect it, you can then measure the concentration of uh, the photosynthetic products at uh, different times of day. And it mentions here that uh, the analysis uh, confirms the presence of carbohydrates in the amino acids in the phloem contents and permits comparison of solute concentrations. Okay, so uh, by uh, analysing or finding the concentration of those solutes in the phloem at different times of day, you can then make a comparison. Uh, the results indicated that when the conditions favoured photosynthesis, uh, the concentration of the soluble sugars in the phloem increases. And there's more evidence for uh, the phloem as the, uh, as the tissue for translocation. Uh, the last one that's mentioned in here is the use of respiratory inhibitors such as cyanide ions. Now using those respiratory inhibitors uh, by inhibiting respiration that prevents or reduces the formation of ATP. If you look back into my uh, mass flow theory video, you'll know that ATP is necessary for, um, for active transport uh, by the companion cells of the sucrose into the phloem at the source and then out of the phloem at the sink.
So without that ATP, um, you can reduce the translocation or completely stop it. Uh, and that's been demonstrated by applying the uh, respiratory inhibitor to the, uh, to the phloem. If you apply that same respiratory inhibitor to the, uh, to the xylem, it has no effect. And that further confirms that it is the phloem that's responsible for the transport of those photosynthetic products.